NASA astronauts just revealed SpaceX's Crew Dragon is 100 times better than Russia's Soyuz. For decades, astronauts called Soyuz a cosmic sardine can. Cramped, buttons everywhere, packed shoulder to shoulder. Now, Dragon feels like a sci-fi movie with touchscreens and spacious seats. Astronaut Soichi Noguchi said it best. The Dragon is the best. But how did SpaceX pull this off? Let's dive right in. Here's what NASA doesn't want you to see. This is astronaut Don Pettit inside Soyuz, and his face tells the whole story. Once strapped in, my heels are nearly in contact with my butt. I am tied down at eight points to a form-fitting couch, making it difficult to move anything other than my arms. But wait, it gets worse. Dutch astronaut Andre Kuipers was even more blunt. It's much too small and tight. These aren't just complaints. These are desperate pleas from people trapped in what they called a cosmic sardine can. Think about this. You're about to rocket into space at 17,500 miles per hour, and you can't even move your legs. You're folded like a pretzel, shoulder to shoulder with two other people, staring at hundreds of buttons and switches that could kill you if pressed wrong. This was the reality for every NASA astronaut for nearly a decade. But here's the question that haunted space agencies worldwide. Why did the most advanced space program on Earth accept this torture? 2011 changed everything. When the space shuttle retired, NASA went from being the kings of space to begging for rides. They had just shut down the most sophisticated spacecraft ever built, one that could carry seven astronauts in relative comfort. Now they were paying Russia $90 million per seat to cram their astronauts into a 1960s death trap. Imagine being a NASA astronaut who flew on the shuttle. You remember the spacious cockpit, the ability to float around, the dignity of commanding the most advanced vehicle ever created. Then suddenly you're stuffed into Soyuz like cargo, unable to move, completely helpless. The psychological impact was devastating. American astronauts went from pilots to passengers, from explorers to tourists, from heroes to humiliated customers paying for the worst possible experience. And Russia? They were laughing all the way to the bank. Every American astronaut was a walking advertisement for Russian superiority. Every cramped, miserable flight was proof that America had lost the space race. But while NASA was suffering in silence, something revolutionary was happening in a California warehouse. When Elon Musk announced SpaceX would build a crew capsule, the entire space industry exploded with laughter. This was the same company that had barely managed to launch a single rocket successfully. How could they possibly compete with 50 years of Russian engineering? The skeptics had good reason to doubt. Building a spacecraft isn't like building a car. One tiny mistake kills everyone inside. The tolerances are measured in fractions of millimeters. The stakes couldn't be higher. But SpaceX had something Russia didn't, a completely different philosophy. While Russia perfected the art of survival in space, SpaceX asked a revolutionary question. What if we made space travel enjoyable? This wasn't just about comfort. This was about fundamentally reimagining what it meant to be human in space, and the results would shock even SpaceX's harshest critics. Step inside Crew Dragon, and your mind struggles to process what you're seeing. Gone are the hundreds of buttons that made Soyuz look like a submarine from the 1960s. Instead, you're surrounded by three massive touchscreen displays that control literally everything. But here's what blew everyone's mind. Those screens aren't just prettier than Soyuz's button maze. They're infinitely more capable. Each screen can display 10 different interface views. With a few taps, astronauts can monitor life support, guidance, electrical power, even manual flight controls. Doug Hurley, who commanded Dragon's first crewed flight, couldn't hide his amazement. You have an overall systems page on the screen, and then you can drill down into individual pages as well. There's a total of 25 to 30 individual pages. Compare that to Soyuz, where astronauts must memorize hundreds of switch positions. One wrong move in that maze of buttons could spell disaster. But in Dragon, astronauts describe the controls as video game-like. It's so intuitive that pilots can master it in hours, not months. But the real revolution wasn't just the interface. It was what SpaceX removed. All that stress, all that fear, all that helplessness. 
Here's where SpaceX completely broke the rules. While Russian spacecraft require constant human babysitting, Dragon operates on full autopilot. It can launch, orbit, dock with the ISS, and return to Earth without any human input whatsoever. Think about how insane that is. This machine is navigating through space at 17,500 miles per hour, approaching a space station the size of a football field, and docking with millimeter precision, all while astronauts sit back and watch. The docking system alone is pure science fiction magic. Hidden behind a nose cone are lighter sensors, high-definition cameras, and thermal imaging that see the ISS better than human eyes ever could. When Dragon approaches the station, it's like watching a ballet performed by robots. But here's the most shocking part. Dragon made history in March 2019 by becoming the first American spacecraft to dock autonomously with the ISS. No human input, no ground control guidance, just pure artificial intelligence making split-second decisions in the vacuum of space, and it gets even crazier. Dragon can relocate between docking ports while attached to the ISS, all without human input. It's like watching a spacecraft play 3D chess in zero gravity. Let's talk about something that might seem trivial but is actually life-saving. Space. Soyuz crams three astronauts into a volume smaller than most car interiors. Dragon? It can comfortably seat seven people, though NASA limits it to four for safety. But this isn't just about luxury. Those reclining seats aren't just comfortable. They're equipped with advanced shock absorption technology that could mean the difference between life and death during landing. In Soyuz, astronauts land on solid ground with a bone-jarring thud that can cause serious injuries. The impact is so violent that astronauts often need medical attention just from the landing. In Dragon, they splash down in the ocean with cushioning so advanced that astronauts describe it as gentle. It's the difference between being in a car crash and floating on a cloud. Here's something that confused everyone at first. Dragon takes 19 to 30 hours to reach the ISS, while Soyuz can do it in just three hours. Critics pointed to this as proof that Dragon was inferior. They couldn't have been more wrong. Soyuz's three-hour sprint requires surgical precision. The launch window is just 12 to 18 degrees of phase angle. Miss it by even a fraction, and you're scrubbed for days. It's like threading a needle while riding a roller coaster. Dragon's slower approach offers something far more valuable, flexibility. It can launch in a phase angle range between 170 and 320 degrees. This means missions can be scheduled around weather, crew readiness, and optimal conditions. But here's the real genius. Dragon's extra time allows for perfect alignment with astronaut sleep cycles, optimal lighting conditions, and maximum communication coverage. When docking time arrives, the crew is alert, rested, and ready for action. Sometimes the smartest move is taking your time. To understand why Dragon's success is so remarkable, you need to know Soyuz's horrific origin story. This legendary spacecraft began with death, and its early flights were written in blood. November 28, 1966. The first unmanned Soyuz test was a complete disaster. Systems failed within minutes of reaching orbit. The mission was scrapped, and a subsequent test killed one person when the rocket exploded on the launch pad. But the Soviets pushed forward anyway, desperate to beat America to the moon. April 1967. Cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov became the first human to die in space when Soyuz's parachute system failed during re-entry. He knew the spacecraft wasn't ready. He flew anyway because he knew if he refused, his backup, Yuri Gagarin, would fly instead. Komarov chose to die rather than let his friend be killed. His last words were curses directed at the Soviet officials who had sent him to his death. This tragedy forced 18 months of redesign. By the time Soyuz returned to service, America had taken the lead in the lunar race. The spacecraft built for the moon would never see it. Here's the fundamental difference that explains everything. Russian spacecraft are built for cosmonauts to fly them. American spacecraft are built to fly themselves. In Soyuz, every system requires human oversight. Cosmonauts must constantly monitor, adjust, and control their vehicle. It's exhausting, stressful, and prone to human error. The philosophy is simple. Humans are in charge, machines are tools. Dragon's engineers took the opposite approach. Minimize human workload by automating everything. 
The spacecraft's computer systems are more advanced than most ground-based facilities. They can make split-second decisions that would take humans precious seconds to process. The philosophy is revolutionary. Machines are pilots, humans are passengers until something goes wrong. Let's break down the shocking differences that prove Dragon's superiority. Soyuz, 7.2 meters tall, 2.7 meters wide, carries three people maximum Dragon. 8.1 meters tall, 4 meters wide, designed for seven people. But the real numbers are even more damning. NASA was paying Russia $90 million per seat for the privilege of torturing their astronauts. Now they pay SpaceX roughly $55 million per seat for a vastly superior experience. That's not just savings. That's a complete reversal of the space economy. America went from being Russia's customer to Russia becoming irrelevant overnight. For years, astronauts diplomatically praised both spacecraft. They spoke in careful, measured tones about the unique characteristics of each vehicle. But now, the truth is pouring out. Japanese astronaut Soichi Noguchi has flown on the space shuttle, Soyuz, and Crew Dragon. His verdict is devastating. The Dragon is the best. Short answer. Each vehicle has its peculiarities, but Dragon is really ready to go up. It's fun to ride. Fun to ride. When's the last time anyone described space travel as fun? That's the revolution SpaceX has created. They've transformed terror into joy, survival into comfort, endurance into pleasure. But Noguchi isn't alone. Every single astronaut who has flown both spacecraft prefers Dragon. Every. Single. One. SpaceX's success didn't just create a better spacecraft. It fundamentally changed how the world thinks about space travel. Russia's monopoly on human spaceflight, which lasted nearly a decade, was shattered in a matter of years. The psychological impact cannot be overstated. For almost 10 years, every American astronaut was a walking advertisement for Russian superiority. Every cramped flight was proof that America had lost its edge. Dragon reversed that narrative overnight. Now Russian cosmonauts look at American astronauts with envy. The hunters have become the hunted. The touchscreen interface isn't just a cosmetic upgrade. It represents a fundamental shift in spacecraft design. Those three screens can be updated with software improvements continuously, while Soyuz's physical buttons are frozen in time. The docking system follows the International Docking System Standard, ensuring compatibility with future spacecraft and stations. Soyuz uses a proprietary system that limits its versatility and future potential. Dragon's heat shield is designed for multiple reuses, while Soyuz capsules are essentially disposable. This isn't just about cost. It's about sustainable space exploration. But the real breakthrough is in manufacturing. Dragon's interior components are 3D printed with integrated cooling channels, allowing for designs that would be impossible with traditional manufacturing. SpaceX isn't just building better spacecraft. They're reinventing how spacecraft are built. This isn't just about American pride or corporate success. Dragon represents a fundamental shift in humanity's relationship with space. We're no longer just surviving the journey to space. We're thriving in it. The implications are staggering. If space travel can be comfortable, enjoyable, and routine, then space becomes accessible to more than just military test pilots. Scientists, engineers, even ordinary people can imagine themselves traveling to orbit. Dragon has proven that the impossible is just the untried. That 50 years of proven Russian engineering could be surpassed by a company that didn't even exist when Soyuz first flew. But most importantly, Dragon has shown that we don't have to accept good enough just because it's always been done that way. Sometimes the best solution is to start completely over. So, there you have it. SpaceX didn't just build a better spacecraft. They completely redefine what's possible when you refuse to accept that's how it's always been done. But here's what really keeps me up at night. If a private company could revolutionize 50 years of proven engineering in just a decade, what else are we accepting as impossible that's actually just untried? Dragon proved that comfort and capability aren't mutually exclusive. That automation can be safer than human control. That starting from scratch can beat decades of incremental improvements. And this is just the beginning. With Starship on the horizon, SpaceX is about to make Dragon look like a horse and buggy. But that's a story for another video. What do you think?
Are we witnessing the end of the good enough era in space exploration? Or is there still something Soyuz does better that we're missing? Drop your thoughts below. I read every single comment. And if you enjoyed diving deep into this space revolution, you'll love our upcoming breakdown of how SpaceX's Raptor engine makes the impossible look routine. Thanks for joining me on this journey to the stars. Keep looking up.